Welcome. In this video, we will be exploring the color vocabulary for Mr. Cuevas' digital art class in Ferris High School. The first word we're going to look at is color, the element of art derived from reflected color. When light comes through, imagine light being the sun, comes through our atmosphere, this prism, and it breaks itself up into bands. And these bands break up into what you would call a color spectrum or a rainbow. So the element of art is, a, is an element derived from reflected light. Pure light is white, it breaks up into bands, and this is what we call color. As I said, it becomes a color spectrum. Word number 13 here is color spectrum. White light is bent and separated into bands of color. Let's look at an example for number 13. When I look at this here, I notice that there is a band here in the Photoshop application. And this band is, in fact, of the color spectrum. I share this because it will be important to us as we select colors throughout the semester. You'll be click on a color picker and you will then look at the spectrum, select the color from the spectrum, and make a choice. The next word on our list is monochromatic. Monochromatic is a color scheme that uses only one hue. One hue, the word means color family. So the hue here is the color blue. So a color scheme that uses one hue. So you notice there's light blue, there's dark blue, there's middle blue, and there's dull blues and bright blues. And so that's one hue, and we call that monochromatic. This is another example of monochromatic just valleys of green and this is an example of monochromatic. You're going to see this image a lot and you're going to make it yourself. The next word is primary colors. We're defined here as red, yellow, and blue. And red, yellow, and blue are the three most basic colors that you can have through pure light. When you break it down to red, yellow, and blue and we mix those three colors, we can make every other color in the spectrum. Starting with making the secondary colors. So the primary colors, here's a color wheel, which we'll talk about in a moment. And the primary colors are red, yellow, and blue, red, yellow, and blue. When we mix these colors, for example, if we made, mix red and yellow, we would make orange, or blue and uh, yellow, we would make green, or red and blue, we would make purple. Those colors would be called secondary colors, and they would look something like this. Let's find our secondary colors, and here they are. So, like I said, when we mix yellow and blue, we make green. When we mix yellow and red, we make orange. Blue and red, we make purple. Those would be called the secondary colors. Next, let's look at the color wheel. The color wheel is the spectrum bent into a circle. So earlier we talked about the spectrum, right, taking us all the way around, uh, taking us through the image. And now when we take that same spectrum, which we saw here, and we bend it into a circle, we wind up creating the color wheel. And this is what it would look like. Let's continue. Hue. Hue refers to the family of color. So here's a great example. There are two different greens here. But you notice I said greens. They both belong to the family of green, but they're not exactly the same. Their hue is green. Here the hue is red. Here the hue is yellow. Here the hue is blue. Even though these colors are not the same, they're in the same family, and we call that hue, the name of the color in the color spectrum. Next, we're going to look at intensity. Intensity is a little bit different because it has to do with how bright or how dull a color is. So here we look at that color picker again. You notice here that the red is very bright. On this side of the page, it's the same value, but it's duller. And we go down here, and it's, you know, dull. It becomes, the red goes from bright to gray. So that's what we refer to as intensity, the brightness or dullness of a color. The next word here is value, the element of art that describes the lightness and darkness of a color. A color up here would be light, a color down here would be dark. 
So light and dark. So we have light and dull. We have light and bright. And then we have uh, dark and bright and dark and dull. So we can have light colors with bright intensity. We can have dark colors with bright intensity. We can have light colors with low intensity or bright intensity. The next word we want to look at is the word called shade. And if you take a basic hue and you add the color white to it, you start, excuse me, the word tint, you add the, the color white to it, you start to make tints. So a little more white makes it lighter and so forth all the way down. If you add black, you'd be creating shades and shades would look like that. The next words we want to look at is colors opposite each other on the color wheel. Those would be complementary colors, and when we click on a color wheel, you'll notice if you have red, the opposite of red would be green. That would be the opposite on the color wheel. If you had yellow, the opposite would be violet. If you had blue, the opposite would be orange. So those are the colors that are opposite on the color wheel. And let's look and see if we have some examples of colors that are opposite on the color wheel. So you know, well, one, let's look at the color wheel here. We see the opposites. Here we see an example of the color of a painting. So here, blue and orange, strong image. This is the image we'll be making in the future. And you can see we have the green against the reds. And again, this artist has painted a flower with complements green and reds. After, after complementary, we look at analogous colors. And analogous colors are colors that sit side by side on the color wheel and have a common hue. So here we look at yellow and green. They sit side by side. The common hue they share is yellow. Here we look at green and blue. They share the hue of blue. Here we see red and purple. They share the common hue of red. And so let's look at examples. Here we see analogous composition. Blue and green are next to each other. Blue and purple are next to each other. This is that image I've shown you before. And here we have green is next to blue, and blue is next to purple. So we see another analogous composition. And then we have, let's see, here we have yellow and green sit next to each other. They're analogous. And yellow and orange are analogous. So that gives us examples of analogous colors. We've already gone over color spectrum, which is the white light. Uh, which is light bent into bent and separated into bands of colors. 14 is warm color, red and orange and yellow. Warm colors make things feel warm. So here's the evening of a warm day. We see the sun and it feels like it's hot, hazy and humid. This feels like a nice warm evening on the river. And here are warm colors describing that same image I promise you will be doing. And why do we call these warm? Because they're the colors that represent fire. They also have the beautiful fall leaves. After warm colors, we have cool colors. And cool colors represent things like snow and ice. And so cool colors are white light, excuse me, are blue, green, and purple. And as we explore here, here's a Picasso painting done in cool colors. Here's more of nature in the winter with cool colors. And this is an artist sharing cool and warm colors juxtaposed side by side, creating this very uh, intense composition of warm against cool. And then the last words we're going to look at is texture. This would be the element of art that refers how things feel or look like how they feel. This texture here would be smooth. This texture here would be dry. This texture here might be oily. So enjoy this video. Study the words. You're having a quiz. Have a great day.